Hello Internet, I'm Remote Leg, and welcome to the Lifestyles Project, a study of a life. Here's our life colony, and eventually it takes over the world. Mutation is now activated, so new species are occurring. Each time a life gives birth, there is a 1 in 5,000 chance that mutations may occur, leading to a new species. And this map uses colours to display different species that have evolved. Here we see the family tree for species 1358, showing all this species' features and the mutations that occurred since species 0. At the top, we see the species ID, and beneath that, its parent ID. We use the parent ID to find the parent and display its features too. Now we can see what changed when species 1358 mutated from its parent 188. So we see that the maximum energy level dropped from 30 by 0.58 units to 29.42. So, how can a decrease in the maximum energy level be a good thing? Well, remember that good things increase the daily energy required to survive, and bad things decrease it. So, this latest mutation reduced the daily requirement by 0 0.023, which could be helpful in lean times. Remember that the daily energy requirement is the amount of energy deducted from a creature each cycle just to stay alive. I need to pick a better term for this because there's actually 15 cycles in a day. Daily energy requirement doesn't really cover it. So, we can use this table to trace the family tree through its parents all the way back to species zero. Looking at the lower half of the screen, we can see all the mutations that occurred. The first mutation reduced the spawn delay by five points. So species 26 now tries to spawn every two cycles instead of seven. The next mutation increased the lifespan by two cycles. You can see that this is species ID 76. So there are 50 mutations in between that might have died out or perhaps they led to another branch of the family tree that we're not seeing here. It's impossible to tell. All we can say with certainty is that a lot happened between species 26 and species 76. The next mutation increased the amount of water this species can drink. And finally, a reduction of 0 0.58 in the maximum energy level brings us back to species 1358. Let's make things more difficult so evolution has to work harder to survive. The first step was to introduce the rule that lives can't spawn into an adjoining cell if the difference in altitude is too great. I thought that a difference of about 100 was reasonable, but species zero disagreed and died out very quickly. After a bit of research, I discovered the problem. I was seeding life at location 300-300, and that just happens to be at the top of a huge mountain. <laughs> So I moved the start position to 350, 350, which is in a smooth plane, and that fixed that problem. But species zero still died out. More research discovered that I was starting them off in the middle of winter. I advanced the calendar to spring, then reseeded life, and now they're happy. Pretty soon, they took over the world again. So... Trying to seed life on the top of a mountain in the middle of winter is not a good idea. Make a note. Unfortunately, evolution is not making any particularly interesting species. Here's a typical one, species 77491. Breeds like a rabbit. It tries to spawn every cycle. Focuses more on the food it can get by reducing its dependence on ether and water and increases its capacity for foam. It also introduced the ability to eat dirt. It reduced its stomach temperature to zero so it can digest that dirt. All these changes increased its daily requirement 
by nearly two units of energy to 5.205. The payoff must have been worth it because this species is thriving. Let's create a new species zero. This species only drinks liquid and breathes air. Consequently, I can raise the stomach temperature to 2 without causing any indigestion. It can still digest everything it's eating, otherwise what's the point? We run the simulation for 700 cycles and this is what we get. A decent sized colony in the centre of the map. Don't let this bright blue colour fool you. The colours just represent different species and are not an indication of health or anything like that. Bright blue just happens to be species 106 and it's doing quite well because they're breeding like little bunnies. They try to spawn every three cycles. It's costing them an extra unit of energy each cycle but it appears to be worth it. So let's look at the health of the creatures in our world. Obviously the ones further north are doing better. Why is that? Well, the distribution of liquids and gases shows that there is much more food up north and this is because it's currently summer in the northern hemisphere. There's also more evaporation and rainfall. At first glance it might look like they've eaten all the dirt too. But that's not correct. What they've done is drink all the water and excrete salt, covering up the dirt. So we're not looking at a valley where dirt has been removed here, but a big pile of salt dung. It all makes sense. I run the simulation for a while longer and once again life is colonizing the whole world, but it's happening more slowly. The distribution looks pretty consistent, but this is a species map and it's not showing all the information. Display the fluids and we can see that it's obviously summer in the southern hemisphere. Look at the health of the creatures and it's striking how much healthier the guys are in summer. This makes sense because they live on fluids that freeze in the winter. One important thing to note, however, is that they don't die in the winter. They aren't doing as well as their cousins down south, but they're still alive. Even these guys up near the North Pole who have survived over a hundred cycles in an Arctic winter. Another thing to notice is that all this life is having an impact on the environment. They're drinking fluids and excreting salt. They're causing a slight wobble in the levels of heat and water. I'm not sure why the levels of dirt have crashed though. If we look at the statistics, we can see that it's not being turned into clay. So it's either being evaporated or eaten. Some investigation required here. That's enough for now. I think I'll tinker with the structure of a species next. Perhaps modify which features are possible. I'd really like to get some form of detection implemented so a creature will be able to scan its surroundings and decide how to act. I'd also like to add mobility so they can move around and search for food. All this is leading toward intelligence, but I have no idea how to build a learning algorithm yet.